Are you ready to learn about the property market? Then you're in the right place. This is Everything Property by Pivotal Homes, where we connect Australia's best developers, agents, home buyer specialists, wealth creation experts, and property advisors to the people of Australia. Broadcasted from One Horse Studios on the Gold Coast. And now, here are your hosts, Hayden Ashton and Tom Egan. G'day listeners and viewers, welcome to Everything Property by Pivotal Homes, where we connect Australia's best developers, agents, home buyer specialists, wealth creation experts, and property advisors to the people of Australia. Today's guests are from a leading Australian building design firm who provide in-house design teams and draftsmen to construction companies around Australia. They have won over 25 awards nationally, successfully completed over 7,000 jobs nationally and have over 120 years of collective experience. Their company, company motto, which I love, is the best way to change the future is to design it. So without further ado, it gives me great pleasure in welcoming Cameron Yarker, co-founder and executive director of I Want That Design and Prue Emily Khan, general manager and senior designer. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Welcome, guys. Thank you for having us. Much appreciated. How are you guys doing? Good? Very well. Very well on this uh, lovely Gold Coast morning. It's, <laughs> the wind is howling through, isn't it? Yeah, it is, actually. It cuts through you. It's, it's, it's a change. Yes. Are you telling me good? It's good, mate. Good. So today, obviously, you guys are going to shed so much light on the design side of things that goes, um, you know, that plays such an important part in what we do as a, as a builder. And I really want to get into that. But before we step into the in-depth analysis of, of what we're going to talk about, I think it's very important to provide context to the, the people at home watching or listening about both your experience, your background, and I suppose how you came to be, you know, at I Want the Design and, and what you guys do. Yeah, no, and... Um... <sighs> It's, it's been quite a journey, I think, through the whole the whole process. And um, as they say, you know, success takes 10 years or mm. 10,000 hours of invested time into um, becoming great at what you do. And mm. I, I think um, it's a culmination of, of many things. So I think our background has been predominantly in – and a lot of our staff actually within our company – um, have come from the tourism and hospitality industries. Right. And I think that's the, the differential between how we sort of place ourselves um, as a company as we've, we're very, um, I suppose, um, what's the word? Uh, customer service. Customer service orientated, yeah, thank you. And um, from that perspective, I think we've been able to, be, to really d- differentiate in terms of where we sit as a company. But mm. um, heading back in terms of our careers, I mean, my career, I had a professional swimming, come from a professional swimming background. Right. Um, so helped four Australian uh, records and um, then didn't, didn't go on with my, my career. Um, That's a lot of work. I used to go to school with a young swimmer <laughs> and he was like hours. He, we were still at school and he yes. was like in the morning he'd do like three or four hours. And yes. Him, you know, from – dark to, to dawn and then go home and swim again. That's right. Yeah, five and a half hours a day of training. Yeah, right. Um, so, you know, two two hours in, in, in the morning, two and a half hours of an evening and then, you know, six days a week. So there's a lot of a time and investment. I think from that, you know, you, you and I think from my parents who always grown had had businesses um, and just sort of seeing their work ethic and I suppose the work ethic that you have to put into any professional, mm. professional career. So um, from a swimming background, it gave me a very, very good the fundamentals of what hard work took. Mm, you know, discipline and, too, and imagine. discipline. That's mm. right, exactly. Um, so from there, um, I picked up my career and I, I went to live in Japan, right. and um, lived in Japan for three years, and um, then from there um, came back to Australia, and I was setting up cultural immersion programs over there and um, and teaching, and um, came back and worked for JTB, which is the largest, one of the world's largest travel travel companies. And um, from there, uh, set up my own tourism consultancy business for seven years oh. and um, was consulting to the Australian Tourism Commission and, and the Queensland Tourism and Travel Corporation and taking delegations from Australia and tra- Australian tourism products and um, taking them over to, to Asia and um, putting together and packaging up tour-related programs and packages back to Australia. 
So I think from there, it's sort of you, 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 being in that service industry mm. um, sort of gave that. And then I met my my beautiful wife, Lisa, um, who the better half, the better half actually, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. And I mean, she's not here today, but um, um, but you know, she really is the the crux and the foundation to where we are today. She mm. is the very much the visionary of the of, of the business. And um, so from there, she she came from a, a creative arts background. Um, she, um, in terms of design, and um, you know, we, we decided to sort of um, we, we we sold the the, the travel um, travel company, and um, from there got into property and property development and construction, and um, we set up a company called I Want That Home, and we worked with about eighty. Uh, we, we did about eighty to about hundred homes a year, and we worked right. with with the Australian Defence Force, Army, Air Force, and Navy. Um, and um, a, the AFL and the NRL and the Super League in the UK. Oh, right. awesome. So we we packaged um, um, product um, to them and mainly their senior players and senior executives, and um, you know put their put their all their house plans and colour selections and, and 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 so forth together, and um, packaged those and built them for them from, from the Gold Coast through to the Sunshine Coast. A mixture of owner occupier investor, ma- ma- um, a little bit of owner occupier, but yep. because most of the guys were were detached, and a lot of the guys that were in the in the army and the air force and navy, mm. they were deployed in Afghanistan and Iraq and yep. and um, deployed over in, in various bases around the world. Um, so they didn't actually have the opportunity to sort of see their see that see their properties. Mm. But one of the one of the things that was, was a huge issue for us is these guys are actually protecting our sovereignty and mm. pr- protecting our country. Mm. And, you know, what were we doing as, 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 you know, back here in Australia in terms of we would um, we'd look at their investment oppor- opportunities for them and then be able to place them into the right type of product, you know, no different to what you guys are doing yep. for your for your clients here today and the reason that they were being able to, you know, not blow all their money because – you know, a lot of those guys, and and, and I'm going to say something that's not disrespectful, yeah, but yeah. but I mean they'd blow it on fast cars, fast women, and you know yeah, e- yeah. E- everything else as well. You know what I mean? So it was a way that we were able to sort of protect their their, their futures yep. and their investment for their families. But not only that, because a lot of the a lot of the money that they'd get was um, you know tax free. Mm. So we we said to them, look, hey. Go and have some fun. Go and have a holiday when you come back and do all those things. It wasn't just about taking, you know, their money and just re- investing all of it. It was saying, hey, you know, you know, you've done a great service for this country and for yourself. You know, you need to make sure you you take that time out. Mm. So, from that perspective, you know, we 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 did that and um, we grew a great portfolio um, for for a lot of a lot of the a lot of the senior. Um, Service people, and then then that rolled out into the the AFL. Um, a lot of um, like the Selwoods and right. the Geelong, um, you know, and a lot of Hawthorns. But I mean, some Matthew, Matthew Lee Matthews, and all right. those, those sort of yeah, you know, right. guys, and the Brisbane Lion Boys, and all those sort of things. And we did a lot of their investment property as well. And then that rolled into the NRL. You know, a lot of this, a lot of the. Um, uh, a lot of those guys, and then they've rolled into the Super League, into the UK, and you know all those yeah, right. sort of things. So we, we we dealt with these guys on a, on a regular basis, and um, you know help help them grow their portfolios. But after after that, um, I got a little bit sick of you know dealing with trades on a day to day basis and <laughs> and project managing my project managing these guys, and we we're doing a lot of it a lo- lot of it ourselves. And and um, Lisa was obviously doing all the all the design side of the of the, of the company and. Um, we just wanted a break from it, mm. so um, she came up with one day. You know, I want that design, and she said there must be a, there must be builders out there that that are sharing the same frustrations that we're sharing, mm. and um, I think that. They, they, well, there definitely was, yeah. uh, because the, one of the biggest issues, and what Prue would Prue would agree with me on this, is that you know we we found it difficult as a building company to have. Um, Great design service, great mm. product, great plans, great uh, great marketing material, all those sort of things, and, and that all culminated into one area. Um, whereas we were using architects, we're just mm. you know the, the fees were exorbitant, the turnaround times were forever. Um, you and know, you're so reliant on that one particular. You know, if you've got someone in house, for instance, if if that person goes down or decides to leave or whatever, you're, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place very quickly. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And then you've either got to use the big firms and if you can't use a one-man band, you know what I mean, So yeah. because of exactly what you said. So we were really stuck, you know, mm. and, we, and, and Lisa was just thinking, gee, there must be a better way to do this. And, and um, you know, that's where her sort of entrepreneurship sort of came in and, and, and kicked in and said, hey, let's, let's develop this business model that, that, that provides all these services for a range of builders. At time, that time we had an opportunity, our youngest daughter, Jordan, was um, – we got, got to discovered um, here on the Gold Coast at a benefit concert in EMI Music um, in, in Nashville. Um, so we, we had the opportunity then to, to move to the US and we right. so um, we took that opportunity and so we, we, we were looking at how we could sort of future-proof, you know, what we were doing as, as a company um, and but also have the ability to, to um, work anywhere in the world and the design model gave us that ability and, and um, you know, I'm very, very thankful for that opportunity that, um, that we have today to be able to you know create um and to be able to um change the lives of so many australians um and it's really important to us as a company in terms of the livability the functionality um of those homes so um yeah and what year did you start we started uh, well i want that design was started in 2009 but we started in 1996 our, oh. our construction career so um yeah so it's, you've seen it's, it all we've seen it all we've, <laughs> we've, we've, we've but i think the thing is we sit on every we've, we've sat exactly where you are we've sat mm. where mix sat, sat we've sat in all of those positions so we have an empathy and we have an understanding and um, we only employ the, the the greatest staff. I mean, mm. we're very very fortunate. I think Lisa and I are extremely fortunate to have incredible people around us. Um, you know, Prue, when you, you get to talk to her today, she's exceptionally knowledgeable. She comes from an amazing pre- pedigree, of, and and I think the thing is that you know all of our staff have that same you know same. Um, fundamental philosophy and, and, and that, that culture that runs through our business is mm. is really important to us and 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 you've only got to look at the successes that you guys are having with the with the plans and designs and, and mm. the communication and the, the, the respect that we have for each other as as you know as um, as partners in this is going forward mm. and and Prue, you came in touch on it pedigree <laughs> Tell us about that. Um, so, daughter of a builder. Um, right. My brother's also a builder, so it's definitely in the blood. Yeah, um, right. Grew up on building sites. My my dad was ex- exceptionally passionate for what he did, and and um, gave me a love for design and and building and and. Um, all things traditional Queenslanders as well. So <laughs> and based in always from the Gold Coast or uh, Queensland? Cameron Mountain. Oh so right, okay, Gold yeah. Coast, yep. So never lived anywhere else. Yeah, right. Cameron <laughs> Mountain. It's the best hey, place I'm in Australia. The, but is it boy? Mm. We used to play Tamron oh, all really? the time in wow. footy. I can't remember the name of the team, but yeah. Bunch of assholes, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Bush rats? Yeah, bush rats. That's it. Yeah. The bush rats. Yeah, the damn brain bush she rats. Does, <laughs> yeah, right. What so, you, it's also the bush yeah. Rat. so your dad was a builder. Your brother's a builder. Um, and so you obviously was you had a love affair with it from a from an early early age. Absolutely. And just passionate. Just. Love buildings, love architecture, just love mm. um, everything about it. Love everything about design and um, interiors, landscape, yep. everything. So. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. And from us, from a construction point of view, for those watching it at home, it's a very important, um, you know, I suppose piece of our puzzle in what we do is is we're able to leverage on, as I said earlier, if we were having an in-house drafting team or in-house drafting person, you've got the expertise and the knowledge of, of, you know, no matter how good they are, of one or two people, you know, normally. Whereas utilising a company such as yourselves, we're able to utilise the knowledge and experience of not only yourselves, but your, your whole expansive team as well in the background. Mm. Oh, that's right. And I mean, I touched on that before. I mean, I mean, I think staff are everything mm. and um, we have, we run a flat bedded structure, even though we have like titles, but you know, I, I don't see myself as any different to any other staff member within mm. the company. And um, you know, our, our, all of our staff come from all walks of life. And I think that's what creates a, a great designer because they've lived. Mm. Um, and I think someone, you know, if I look at, you know, someone like Christy, you know what I mean? Who's, you know, what she's done a you know law degree she's done her a bachelor of science she's done um her me- she's radiology radiology um you know she, she, you know it, they've come from such experienced background mm. her husband's you know a, a, a dentist and you know all the, all these sort of all these things they have their own practices though they understand business they understand people they you know all of those sort of things and they, they, they've lived and if you look at you know Catherine that works for us as well I mean she's um 
her, her father's been a building designer, you know, all his life. So she's grown up, you know, pretty similar to Prue, and she's got that pa- same passion and drive right. and, um, you know, to be this, this this great designer and I think to prove something to not only to herself but also to her, her father and parents. And, and, and if you look at Liberty who comes from this uh, um, um, upbringing that's been – quite tragic but I mean from that from that has been, been she's been able to dig deep and, and be able to find herself and she's mm. just bright and bubbly beautiful personality and and is great on the on the commercial side which we have a commercial side to our business as well um, so and her design skills are just ex- exceptional she's a, she's a creative genius and she mm. really is and, um, and there's so many so many others that, that, that are, and I'm just using those three as an example um, but led by you know uh, led by Lisa um, and you know as our creative director and Prue um, as our general manager um, to be able to ensure that all of those all of those staff members come mm-hmm. together and they, they they work hand in hand I basically say that you know I'm the you know um, I'm the conductor, and mm. they're the ones creating the. Yeah. They're, they're the ones creating the beautiful music. You wave your arms a lot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I wave my arms around, and I, I just keep them enter- I just keep them entertained, you know, and, you know, and, and, and throughout the day because I'm actually the only male in the company. Oh right, yes, there you go. Yeah, exactly. So I've we're, heard we're, of worse problems. Yeah, that's yeah. Exactly. <laughs> How many staff members? Uh, we have ten. Ten. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, right. in total, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it sounds like I mean, what, yeah. one thing we really appreciate is. You know, sometimes when you, obviously we're doing our competitive analysis and research to some of our competitors and you look at some of the floor plans and you're like, man, does Stevie Wonder design this? You know, <laughs> you, you have no idea what he was looking at. Some of it's just deplorable in terms of some of the stuff. It looks like it's just slapped together. It's got four beds, two bath, two car. She'll be right type yeah. mentality. It's, it's yeah. not practical when yeah, the, it's when not the practical. design's actually built. And that's one thing that we always look at when, like we worked on those ranges designs a couple of months ago and released a new range. They're all practical to designs, how you use them, how the house will actually be built. It actually, You can actually see that there's been common sense used mm. on how this house is going to work. Well, we've walked into some designs, I'm like, there's a study over there, you can't even get to it. <laughs> or you can't use it all. There's cabinetry in the kitchen you can't even get to or use. They just haven't been well thought out. Mm. Absolutely. And yeah. I think the thing is that, that's what you, you – you, when you come to our firm, you 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 get the combination of all of those all, mm. all of those sort of things, and yeah. and what, with with our with our luxury brand and, and our motto with that is with the power of collaboration we deliver. Right. Okay. So it, it is a collaborative effort, um, and in our our whole. Um, Office is set up in such a way, you know, with with, with beautiful, you know, side bench, bench seating. So when you're talking to a staff member, you know, you can sit at there, you're at their desk, but you're somewhere comfortable. You've got somewhere where they can lay down. They can, mm. you know, they can take time out. They can take break. They're on they're, they're on these computers pretty much from, you know, eight o'clock in the morning to eight o'clock at night. We're not out of the office, you know, before nine. Well, I know Lisa and I, but nine thirty, ten o'clock most nights. It's six day week mm. operation. We're very invested in this, mm. you know. So I think, and so are the staff. And they see that, and um, you know, I think Prue can really, really touch on you know the design aspect and 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 the effort and energy that goes into making these houses absolutely liv- livable. So, mm. yeah, Prue, yeah. I think with the um, collaboration is 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 key. Mm. So, um, everyone lives differently. Everyone has preferences yeah. in in how they live, or you know what's important to them in their homes. So, having multiple opinions um, can really uh, sort of bring the best outcomes so um yeah the preferences that people put on things so for some people having direct access from the laundry to outside for instance is um is really important and for other people not so much so it's so funny you say that because i'm always arguing i'm like ah the laundry doesn't need to go directly outside because i probably don't do the washing (laughs) 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 If you use the line or you use the dryer you know there's everyone lives differently so yeah make with every design, there's there's multiple choices that we have to make as mm. designers, and um, what choice is the is the right one can be very hard to decide on your own. So that's where having a team around you really helps to um, make those decisions and make the right ones. So um, when we're when we're talking about sort of more um, investor stock, it's 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 about having a plan that's going to work for the most amount of people. Mm. It's not yep. a custom design specifically for that family. It could be. F- you know, as a rental situation and it has to suit a variety of people. Yeah. yeah. Are you yeah. seeing different trends in different states? Like because you're building na- – you're designing nationwide, 
in New South Wales, you said was one of the largest areas that you designed for. Is there a different for the investor stock? Is there a different type of home being built than what compared to Southeast Queensland? Is it pretty much the same in each state? Or? In, in terms of style, I think it's pretty much the same mm. across Australia. But yeah. um, when it comes to lots, that's where it sort of gets different. So right. lot sizes and um, and different controls on those lots is is what is. Re- quite different. So. Impacts the design. Yeah, yeah. So we're seeing a lot of narrow lots in Queensland. So a lot of the eight and a half, the ten, the twelve and a half. Um twelve and a half is the I think um the biggest most of the time. The new yeah. yeah. <laughs> where that's that's um still rare to see in a lot of areas of New South Wales. So their wow. their narrow lots are, are more like fifteen. Right. right. Yeah. They, and so but they're obviously not as deep, is that right? Or are they, are um they... fifteen by thirty is about yeah, average. Right. So they're, they're four fifty yeah. square meters. So they're good so. blocks. Yeah, mm. yeah, I know. And it's a small <laughs> it's a, it's a small block to thought. us. That's huge. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. 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 Yeah, to yeah. us is I think when we look at and especially the bigger developers, they're getting down to three fifties now. They're doing twelve and a half by twenty yeah. eights and yeah. it's getting smaller and we, smaller. We, we've yeah. seen some that are fifty nine square meters. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Triple yep. car garage. I yep. think we looked at the land estate <laughs> the other day that was sent through to us. 59 we'll, square metres. Yes. How does that even work? How do you, Build it, to boundary, all yep. sides, It'll and go up three stories. Go up yep. three. I was going to say, yep. it'd have to be a garage with a house yep. with the floors yep. on top. Right. Correct. Yep. Mm. It is. So well, what's look, that? Essentially, you, you build to boundary, so it's a 150 <laughs> square metre three-storey house. Yeah. In, yeah. in essence. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand the sense in that because it wouldn't be cost effective for a builder to even build something like that as well. Yeah, like so if you look at 160 square meters, three stories high, it's like the square meter rate would be really high as well. Yeah, Versus yeah, it's not overly practical. That's it's for not sure, practical, so. but, and that's why I think developers. And we were talking about this before. When we have developers on. ever been practical? Because <laughs> <laughs> we're looking at some um, blocks in Morayfield on the north side, and I think what was the land size there? 200 square meters. Yeah, 263 or something like that. Yeah, 263, mm. and I was just like. When you're looking at, especially an investor's point of view, when you're looking at value for money and the cost effectiveness to build that home, mm. it's like those sloping blocks on two different pads. A lot of the time, like, we don't touch them because the, what the developers try and sell them for is not what they're worth. Two ends don't meet. Yeah. They don't yeah. meet. If, if it's four, if it, you've got a flat block and you can build a 210 square metre single storey home and it costs you 450, if you've got a split level block and it's going to cost you 450 to build, why would you want that block? it'd have to be marginally cheaper because the build cost is going to be so much more. It normally ends up more than what the flat block is. And I'm like, and then you always see on their you know, price list, they're always the last to go. Yeah. Because I just don't think they're practical with the pricing. Yeah. And um, so let's play this out. We've just given you guys, we want a new design. You'll come, you'll generally come up with something yourself, Pru, or one of the team, or, and then you guys will workshop it right across the team to pick each other's brains and, and really workshop through, is that an, a good design? Yeah, so um, with with new designs, it could go to any one of our staff members. Yep. Um, but yeah, we generally all have um, a say in, in the yep. design, and you know we'll lay down the sort of initial bones of the design, and mm-hmm. then and get second opinions yep. um, and say you know how how's this working? How do you feel about that? And mm. you know we might make suggestions and make changes and and push it and pull it, and then by the time it goes to the client, obviously you guys would then give us some feedback, feedback and as then well. it, yeah, it grows from there. So it's always um, a process and um yeah there's always collaboration involved so and, and i suppose coming from your construction background as well you guys have a sense of is that going to be pain in the ass to build you know <laughs> from from it's all well designing something but if it doesn't work on the other end and it you know it's 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 a nightmare to to construct then yeah. you know then it, then it quickly becomes you know uncommercial to 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 build that house. I think it does and I, I think that's one of the things in terms of like the experience that, that, that spread throughout the office is that um, we're always constantly thinking about the cost. Mm. Um, we, we, we design almost backwards, you know, because we come from cost and we work backwards. Mm. We're not going, oh, this is all fancy and mm. this is all fantastic and blah, blah, blah because well, the reason I, I would say we would get three to five jobs per week from architects um, and from clients that have not been able to build that house due to the cost constraints mm. of or the cost of that home, um, where they might be two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars over over their budgets. Mm. So we're, we're we're constantly trying to work with the builders in terms of ensuring that we meet their budgets um, and that we come in. We can we can still smart design. Um, and we can reduce the cost and we can still have a great facade and we can still make that home look beautiful um, without 
all the all the bells and whistles. Mm, mm. And I think that's one of the things where Prue leads her team so exceptionally well. I think coming from you know a building background, she's grown up in building sites. You know, mm. she's Growing, got these I great. Grew up listening to um, yeah. uh, people not being happy with how a plan's been drawn, so yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> instilled in me to to really think about. Um, I suppose the guys on site as well. Yeah. It goes down to the roofers. Are they actually going to be able to get their drills in to fix mm. that safety? You know, mm. there's there's so many aspects that we have to consider um you know when we're, we're when we're designing a house mm. you know it doesn't have to just be practical for the people that are living in it but it has to be practically um built as well mm. yeah. um you know the guys on site have to be able to actually get in and, and do what they need to yeah. do so um you know and as cam was touching on um you know the more practical you are with the design um the more cost effective that design is going to be and, and um, you know, affordability is, is yeah. a huge thing. So, And I think, the, I mean, uh, the the really awesome part about your business as well is that you've, re, you know, right from end to end, from design in your plan right through your marketing collateral, mm. you know, you, you're able to really, I suppose, um, do the whole back end before we touch it on a sales point of view, which... I suppose it, it um, there's often a disconnect, you know, maybe you might draw the plans and then a lot of the times you see maybe a builder outsource or go a cheap route over to, you know, Bangladesh for cheap labour or whatever for, yes. a, for a marketing render and, and the two ends, you know, what you've done on a design point might be the best design but it's not, you know, it's not really getting the respect it deserves from, you know, the pretty picture which is, let's face it, a lot of the time people are drawn in by that, you know, big image and that pretty picture on the front, on the front end of that, of that brochure. So, you know, the really – really good thing for us is we'll finish a house and it's, you know, you hold the two side by side and they're, they're pretty much bang on, you know, unless their colours have changed or whatever through to client's personal preference. Yeah. It's, fun, it's funny you say that actually because when we, were, when we were building, we used to have really big um, signs out the front of it with, with the 3D render on the, mm. on, on the front of the sign with our logo and all that sort of stuff. And the painters used to come to site and sometimes they wouldn't have the um, uh, the actual selections right. of what was there. So they'd go to the sign <laughs> at the front of the property and they'd go, yeah, it's about that. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, yeah, 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 that I, think, I think it's that colour and we'd come like, gee, you did a good job, you did a good job with the paint, you know. Yeah, you know, right. So, yeah, so, yeah, it, you, you're right. That, 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 that marketing material is really important. I think Libby um, and Libby, Prue and Lisa, I mean, pretty much the three that do the renders uh, in, in the office as well and, um, but Libby is just, she's exceptional at it. She, uh, she we, we try and get her to do most of it because she is exceptional. Yeah, so. right. yeah. <laughs> she knows how to make yeah. anything look good. So. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And it's amazing how colours she and she can and try with Tommy next. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Exactly. It's amazing how colours can make a difference, and also product. I mean, you're breaking up product as well. You know, I mean, not having any more than three colours. You know, mm. per palette. You know, or three mixed product and those sort of things. And I think we're a lot of. Um, design companies do go wrong is that they they try to ex extend that and therefore you have this imbalance you know because sometimes you know through um imbalance through an imbalance just cut does come balance as well mm. so you've just got to you've just got to find that happy medium and sometimes keeping it simple is you know often the best uh you know if, if i often you know obviously we're on site not on site but driving through some of these estates a lot of the time and you'll have what looks like a you know a beautiful structure, but they've gone ballistic. You know, mm -hmm. it feels like they've just got yes. tins of paint and they've gone, yeah. and they've got ten different cans and they just you know it's absolutely mayhem and it sort of takes away or attracts from, um, I suppose the, the presence that that house has in itself and um, that's what we you know really pride ourselves on. Obviously, along with you guys, is, is keeping it simple and keeping it absolutely. timeless. Yeah. I suppose yeah. so. It's not going to date. It's it's going to appeal, particularly for the investor um, clients that we're dealing with. It's going to appeal to the masses. Mm. You know, a green wall can, or a green, you know, a green front of the house can throw off a lot of people, and, and you're not going to appeal to the broader market. A absolutely, and I think one of the things is, I mean, I've grown up. My my uh, my parents have had; they've been in the horticultural industry and nurseries all their lives. Mm -hmm. um, my my sisters in the nursery business, my brothers in the nursery business, and oh. the landscape supply business. So, I mean, all all of those sort of things. So, I've grown up with you know greenscapes around, and I think one of the one of the biggest issues that I'd I'd like to see you know moving forward is a lot more money invested into actual landscaping. Mm. I think the thing is that um, the the the, the the disconnect that I see right now, and especially living in America for seven years and the integration of their developments and their estates and all those sort of things, especially in master plan communities. And yes, the Stocklands and Lend Leases and all that sort of stuff do a great job here in Australia. Mm. But when we get into suburbia and those sort of things, it'd be lovely to see, you know, sort of a little bit more money and effort put being put into landscape design. Because mm. I think that's what really 
um, you know, accentuates that that house and that product. Mm. Um, and Something other than a jelly bean gun. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, absolutely. You Five know, they, come on, come on. We've got it. And I think councils need to sort of get a little bit more proactive yeah. in that as well. Um, so, because. I think it just makes that house a lot more livable. Mm. Um, it, you know, I mean, everybody walks their dogs or the, or, or whatever, their, their mm. children down the street or whatever. So therefore, if you've got the if you've got this community and you've got this sense of community and, and you've only got a, you know, why do you want to live in that estate? Because yeah. It, yeah. it's landscaping. You look at Hope Island and Sanctuary Cove and you know all of these other bigger master plan communities. I mean, it gives you the warm and fuzzy. It does. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You like. Somewhere, somewhere I want to live, and ultimately, ultimately that's, that's why right. people are going to pay a premium down the track to buy that house because the neighbours, you know, the neighbours' houses look good, and they want to be in the same neighbourhood as their, you know, their friend or the kid or whatever. You keep those values high. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Exactly. So, and I think that that's really important, and especially in times like now, where you know, you know, we are in uncertain times, mm. and um, but you know, if we're we living in nicer environments mm. and, and, and communities and and those sort of things, then you know, it, it's lovely to get out and, you know, get that fresh air but just feel like you're in a... In, mm. in a, in a, in a I think it's more important these days as well with the lot sizes getting mm. smaller is you yep. don't have that opportunity to have a, you know, a nice big garden and, mm. and your own sort of outdoor space, um, which, you know, there's benefits in that um, in, in terms you don't have the maintenance, you don't have to spend all weekend, um, you know, mowing the lawn or, or whatever. But if you've got that um, sort of open space, the public open space, you can still enjoy the outdoors mm. and, and doing those outdoor activities um, um, without sort of the hassle of the maintenance, which um, can be handy. So yeah, you touched on it. Uncertain times, and obviously, you know, we we're, in, we're certainly in an uncertain time. And, and with, I think it's really going to be interesting to see which way um, design, particularly building residential design, sort of maybe changes slightly with more significance or more importance maybe placed on study or office areas due to the fact that. It's, you know, Australia, we've, we've all seen it. I mean, even us in, in, in house, we were forced to work from home. Yes. And I, th- I think, you know, the old saying, you know, I'm going to work from home today used to be a little bit of a, you know, a rub off, you know, like you just really, you're just going to sit at home and watch TV or whatever and send a few emails to make it look like you've done something. But I think on the back of what we've been through, it's actually proven a lot of industries and companies that working from home is somewhat productive. And, and are we going to start to see, do you think, a change or a shift in, in maybe a higher importance being placed on office and Absolutely. study space. It's already started. Yeah. We, right. yeah, yeah, the the last few sort of um, client meetings that we've had, um, you know, with with the sort of uh, younger couples with the mm. younger children. Um, having that home study has been really important because mm. they have just been working from home and they realise that they really need that space. Mm. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I, yeah, Prue's exactly right. And, and a lot of the discussions that I've had with a lot of our builders and, and clients alone, um, especially in, in, in New South Wales and Sydney, um, a lot of our big builders in like Wollongong, Port, uh, Port Macquarie, mm. um, you know, sort of more the um, central coast areas and those sort of things. So we're, we're seeing a major change in the clients I'm saying to that have worked for Qantas, that work for, you know, larger, larger corporations, um, you know, city councils, etc. They're saying, well, you know, we're travelling one and a half hours yeah. a day, three hours a day, sometimes up to four hours a day. That four hours a day has now been rest, reinvested back into my children, my mm. wife. I mean, and you think of, you know, relationships and, and that child that has, has an upbringing is just so, so important. So mm. I think, you know, from this, there's there's a lot of positive mm. that's coming from from, from this. And, and I think, yeah, definitely from a design perspective, yeah, we'll see a lot more um, home offices um, being integrated in back back in back into homes, and that's obviously going to then you know um, play a little bit of a a, a a change as well in the commercial space that you guys are dealing dealing with too. Uh, 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 perhaps I mean I'm not across that space, but perhaps you know there's going to be a shift in the commercial space to less you know less seating arrangement or permanent seating to more sort of dynamic you know workspace flows in, in your commercial spaces or, or as well yeah we're just doing a, doing a, a Brisbane big Brisbane law firms um, um, commercial offices at the moment mm. and um, now we've had to you know we've, we've had to readjust you know so, so, so certainly from social distancing uh, mm. point of view um, so we're just re- readjusting the plans in relation to that but you know they're you know they're a team of about 18 um, and so you know, we've had to, you know, really, really relook at. Um, there's some uh, will will stay at home in terms mm. of eighteen being in in that one office. 
Um, so yeah, there, there there is change coming through. Mm. We're fortunate in our office that we are very um, we're very spread out. We've mm. got a lot of space, um, so we're fine on on, on our front. But um, definitely, I think going forward, um, there's going to be change. Uh, and I, I think sometimes it's great, you know, not only that, I know Prue, her husband works in hospitality, he's an executive chef and, and um, so, you know, maybe it's great that, you know, on a Monday that she can stay home with him because he mm. works weekends. And yeah. So so, mm. so I think a lot of this change is, is only going to be great for companies mm. and, and great for um, employees and, mm. and, um, and not only great for our just our own personal well-being yeah. as well, you know what I mean? I think work is one thing, but I think we've there's been a disconnect between family and work and mm. and, and I think it, we, we just have to, you know, it's like we make got to make money, got to make money, mm. you know. The cost of living in Australia is exorbitant. Mm. It's, it's, it's very, very yeah. high, you know. So, um, you know, so you've, you've got to live and you've got to put food on the table and, and a, lot of, a lot of families struggle with that. So, mm. um, so we can ensure that we can have more affordable housing and, and companies like, you know, Pivot, homes that are I think doing an incredible job in terms of and but you know we've worked very very hard on that over the last you know three years to ensure that we've got you know great affordable product mm. um, you know great designs we've you know mix been very great in terms of you know we've, we've been able to work really closely on ensuring um, we've been able to you know get the best out of the, uh, out of that product mm. yeah. yeah and that's you know ultimately that's what we've got to do you know we, we say we've got to deliver the outcome yes and if the outcome's anything other than Superb, then you know we've failed. Yeah, we've failed. Everyone's failed in the yeah. organisation, right down to right down to our tra- uh, trades. And I think you know when when we speak to both of you guys, you can sense a lot of pride um, in what you're doing, and in that it's really, really, really good. Because as I said, a lot of the time, you know, if there's not that pride in that initial phase, it's you know, as you said, the old saying, it's ten mil down at the slab, it's 150 mil out, you know, up the top on the roof, you know. So having that that consistent you know, um, pride in, in, in the workflows is, is so important to delivering the outcome. Well, it is. And I think one of the, one of the other things is that I always say to build, because builders are always like pushing, I thought oh, we, we need the plans back, mm. we need the plans back, we need the plans back, you know what I mean? And, and I get that and understand that. But what they fail to understand a lot of the time is that we're actually looking at how we can best cost effectively mm. save them money. Mm. Yeah. That's, that, that, that's what is in the back of our mind. Mm. Purely and simply. And I think the thing is that sometimes we're, we're, we will hold a plan, you know what I mean? We'll have finished it, mm. you know what I mean? But we hold it and we sit on it, you know what I mean? And then we come back to it and we revisit it. And we're so re-looking at it and we, so we say, well, you know, that span, okay, we could reduce that span by putting a beam here or whatever it might mm. be. Okay, so all of a sudden we've just saved you three grand, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. But if you're pushing for an hour or two hours or a day, mm. or what's, the, what's the cost in that? And if we do that over four or five products – we could be looking at saving, you know, ten, fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah. You know, I mean, so all of these things are, are really, really important to us. So we're not just thinking of it from a design point of view. We're thinking, mm. like we we're talking before, we're talking about from a practicality and a cost saving. And that cost saving is not only passed on to you, the builder. It's passed on to the client oh, as well. Mm. And that's really, really important to us as we go, we go forward. In, in well, it helps us sell as well. Like when we're, ha- when we're competing and we, we might get an extra 10 square metres in a home that's more cost effective than our competitors. Exactly. That's what's actually giving us leverage to get more sales. So it goes back to the client, goes back to us. And in turn, we can do more houses and get more designs done. So. Exactly. And mm. not only that, and like I was saying before, the collaboration, you know, there might be designs that we, we, we whilst we're in actually the design phase, we might just quickly shoot that out to our engineer and say, oh, look, what, what, what do you think mm. of that? Can you just, can you just comment on that? Sort mm. of, where, where, are, we, are, are you are we on the same page? Mm. You know, are we heading down the right direction, the right path? So all of those sort of things in terms of that collaboration is, is really important for that end result. At the end of the end result, the client gets a great product. Mm. Yep. And I love your motto, the best way to change the future yep. is to design it. Mm-hmm. Well, I read that and I was like, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. And that's, I think, having that innovative approach, I mean, one thing that we've, um, you know, changed and adapted in our construction methods uh, is obviously the implementation and use of F- FRC, FC opposed to brick in the majority of the cases. Mm-hmm. And look, Sydney, Melbourne, they're obviously still very fixated on, on, on brick, brick, double brick. Double brick, brick yeah. in, in, in Western Australia. Yeah, yeah. double mm-hmm. brick. Um, but, you know, we're, we're seeing that, you know, the, the design, um, you know, uh, aesthetic from it on from an outside of you know walking you know driving past the house, it looks looks phenomenal. It looks Absolutely. much nicer. Yeah, and you can do a lot more with it. It's it's a beautiful look. Um, the 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 lightweight products are um, 
they they've come so far. I mm. think you know there's a real stigma, especially with the New South Wales um, sort of market, um, that bricks low maintenance. But mm. the FC um, sheet products are low maintenance. You know, and with the paints that are out there now, um, you really don't have to paint very very often. And it comes back down to um, timeless design yeah. as well, especially here in Queensland. You know, um, traditional Queenslanders are beautiful. It doesn't yeah. matter how old they get, they're still beautiful, and they yeah. may be falling down, but they're still beautiful. So so, yep. um, you know, it's it's timeless, um, it looks great, but it also saves a lot of space. So mm. when, when you are on a, a narrow lot, um, you know, brick veneer adds a extra 150 uh, mil to every external wall. So across the lot, that's 300 mil that could be used mm. internally in a bedroom size um, as opposed to just being in the brickwork and the cavity. So mm. um, there's so many benefits to having those lightweight features. And a lot of what, people don't realise that brick's not a structural you know, no. not structural support. People yeah. like, is the house going to be still standing? You know, like yeah, they they think matter. they think the strength comes from the brick, but yeah. the brick just sits there. It doesn't do anything yeah, exactly. but sit there. So but they actually think it's cheap. Is this does this um, is it a lot cheaper to build in that? No, it costs us the same. Oh, okay. There's literally no savings cost for us either at all to go to FC. Yeah. Okay. One thing I noticed, like the benefit that I noticed, we've got a home side by side to each other. One's in brick, one's in FC. It is so much cooler in the FC sheeting home. Yeah. Way nicer. If you go into the brick in the middle of the day in summer, it's 10 times as hot as well. Yep. So, because bricks are like those, you know, it's like rocks. You step on hot rocks, they're hot for yeah. days. Yeah. You Thermal know, mass. Yeah. Yep. The, Absorbs yeah. all the heat. Yeah. 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 So, the insulation I find is huge. You've got the space. There's so yeah. many benefits to it. Plus, like, I know our boss just finished a, a home and he just sold it for, I think, nearly $5 million. And that house was all built in FC. Yeah. And mm. people, like, it's just changing the way that people look at it. Absolutely. On that, what's the energy efficiency difference? Is there is there is there an actual energy deficient uh, efficiency difference between the two? Not really. Yeah. No. When when you're running it through the sort of the standard programs used in Australia for energy efficiency, there really yep. isn't um, a huge difference. Mm. Um, you might need a slightly higher insulation value in a lightweight wall, but it's it's very marginal. So, mm. um, yeah, it yeah. doesn't really make that much of a difference. Yeah. So. Mm. And I suppose it's very um, uh, you can you can do a lot of different things with you know with 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 cladding or FC can't you? It's, it's um, what's the word? You can uh, can't think of what I'm trying to say, but you can do so many different More flexibility. Yeah, in flexibility, design. yeah, exactly right. Yeah. So you can I notice the difference on the facades, the yeah. different facades that we can deliver with the different roof pitches and the styles of the facades look so different to each other. Where with brick and render, it's a lot more difficult. Where they still add some cladding in. It's yeah. hard to make different features where and I'll find the, the FC with the different cladding materials and prime line and axon, mm. all the different materials can make it look really nice with multiple features on the front. Absolutely. And I think, you know, having um, – being able to paint as opposed to just having a face brick, you get a lot more individuality in it as well. Mm. You know, um, clients can have their stamp on their home because they can choose their colours, mm. um, you know, and make it a, make it a little different. And um, where we, with the, the bricks, you know, sometimes it's just the – same old, same old. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Brick that yeah. you see down the road, so. <laughs> and you can always you can always tell the era that the yes. house was built yeah. from the type of brick used. So especially here on the Gold Coast, you know you you know like the tile. houses from the seventies, you know the houses from the eighties. So yeah, you'll um, go through like a, a suburb and it's just red brick, especially in Melbourne. You know, like yeah. Melbourne just love red bricks. You know, yeah. you go through some of those areas and it's. It's like they just dumped, you know, millions of bricks in the area and said, that's all you've got to use, it's red <laughs> brick. You know, you're getting one in, one in ten have a black brick, but there's no yeah. there's no cream-coloured bricks down in Melbourne. I'm sure of it. I don't do them. <laughs> there's more and more colours coming out. I got a colour yeah. pub the other day and I'm like, there's about 30 different coloured bricks. I'm like... I mean, look, definitely brick is coming back into I vogue. Do, I do it, love yeah, brick. brick yeah. When it's done when it's done well, it's mm. beautiful. And mm. it's painted brick I absolutely adore as well. You know, it can be it can be used really, really well. Mm. Um, but I think, you know, when in in the grand scheme of things, especially on these small lots, you know, there's so many um, benefits yeah. from yeah. not having it. So um, an extra well, ten, fifteen square meters is a huge oh, huge deal. difference on yep. a two hundred and ten square meter home. Absolutely. It's massive as yep. Got over half a room, you know, in your in size in and the we, house, and we find that like genuinely our houses, when upon completion, rent better. Yes, uh, and I'm not putting it down to the fact that it's FC, but it's probably a, a really good 
um, you know, reason or an indi- indicator as to why they do because it feels more spacious and the, and the rooms are larger and it's more livable, practical. Absolutely. Well, that's right. And that comes back to, the, 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 I mean, and I, the reason I think we have a predominantly all-female office is because I think women are a lot more um, uh, percep- perceptive mm. um, and they're the ones that, you know, they've always been in the households and those sort of things, mm. raising the children, those sort of things. So the livability of the home. So when, when our staff and, and are designing a house – they're actually living it. Mm. They're not designing it. They're actually living it. They're, mm. they're, they're furnishing it. They're furnishing it. They're decorating it. it. They're decorating <laughs> it. They're, absolutely, like Prue said. So I think the thing is that that is that is the difference. So therefore, they're they're, they're looking at the egress and how things, how we walk through, and how how we're taking laundry to clotheslines, and how we're mm. you know walking through the home. You know, how so we're getting the groceries into yeah, the pantry. pantry and and yeah, exactly. All the, all of those yeah. sort of, so all those sort of things yeah. that, that you and I aren't thinking about. Yeah, yeah. You we know? just see front door groceries yeah. in the bag. Yeah. We'll just walk to wherever it is. There's no problem. Where's the TV? Where's the TV <laughs> Absolutely. Where's the theatre room? You know, where's the where's the bar? Yeah. You know? where, where, where do we put the motorbikes? Yeah, yeah. 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 that's yeah. right. Boats, motorbikes, jet skis. I've yeah. been to houses where we put the laundry in one side of the home and the clothesline's on the other side or at the back of the house. I'm like, okay. And there's no lighting anywhere. Mm. It just hasn't been well thought out, all the electrical plan. Just small things like that, but it makes the biggest difference. Mm. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you know, ventilation is a huge thing. You know, um, so energy efficiency is 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 is, a, is an important thing because that's the livability. And the the thing is, if we invest that time and effort and energy into that, mm. and and the build quality is there as well, when that investor invests in that product or that person lives in that home they're going to live in that home for longer mm. so from an investment point of view they're going to be they're going to be in that mm. home for longer they're not going to be turning over tenants and, and yeah. doing all those things so that's a really really important key you know element to mm. to, to 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 the collaboration it's, mm. it's all long all of our well, clients we always sell we all, i think 95 percent of the designs that we sell would be 210 most of what we do yeah, yep. yeah. we just don't sell anything smaller because me and hayden always have the uh, the, the aspect of make it a little bit bigger, make it where there's room to grow for the family and there's enough space for them to stay there for a couple of years without, okay, this will be a short-term stay for six months. Yeah. No, we want to have tenants for our clients for three to five years yes. and that extra space, the ec- well-thought-out size is, is going to make a huge difference to them. And I think going forward, I mean, there's going to be – obviously as, as – Development becomes harder. The cost to actually produce developments is becoming more costly. Mm. Council fees, regulations, services, all of those sort of things are becoming a lot more expensive. Mm. So, you know, to, to produce a block of land is, is, is becoming, you know, quite, quite expensive. I mean, if you, I think if you look at I think we did some, you know, it's almost like 60%, 70%, you know, mm. a, a fee related, you know, more so than actually – land cost related. Yeah, so yeah, the civils and the all civil, stuff, yeah, exactly. the development stuff's quite, put, it yeah, is. quite cheap. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. know, they, what, there, was that new, there was a new ruling come out yeah, just a couple of months ago where a couple of developers struggling with it, you know, that koalas, I think, if you've got tre- any trees or anything on your on your raw parcel, albeit one or two, you know, it's you're down the drain pipe hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to mm. deliver that product. I think it's like 250000 for one koala. That's right, yeah. They, you lo- you've, they find it out on your site and... Exactly, yeah, like tree protection area. zones are a huge issue at the moment. I mean, it's a it's a it's a it's a huge problem, and and councils really need to get around it. Um, mm. To be honest with you, I mean, if they're not natives and those sort of things, and not not protected species, and, and I understand that, and it's very very important that we do protect mm. our, our heritage and our culture. Um, but I think the thing is that you know, if if they're going to be approved land developments, then there needs to be some common sense in mm. that in that area. I mean, some of the things that we're seeing is just outright ridiculous, mm. um, and. And um, it, that becomes a major cost because it's a cost not only to the client, back to the builder, et cetera. Mm. So I think, you know, we need to be really, really, you know, um, looking forward to how we can work more closely with councils, um, with our state state government, mm. state le- legislation. Um, there's got to be a conversation. There's got to be a conversation, a, a lot, absolutely. Yeah, it's, a lot of the time the councils just stone, well, it is what it is. Without, yes, that's right. Without looking at the practical implications mm. of, of yep. what can be done and how can we work together on this to ultimately deliver housing for the people of Australia. It, you know, that's what ultimately we're all, we're all playing a part of. And, yes. You know, coming up with these ridiculous, you know, protocols and, and rulings and, and whatnot that and inhabit that, it'll it'll lead to a shortfall sooner or later and there already is a shortfall in housing. Yeah. You know, that's Absolutely. well documented. And yep. it's not getting any easier to, to build or develop a, and construct, that's for sure. And the certain councils and the setbacks they require, like I know the one that we dealt with in Pilara, 
from the, the other estates that we built around it, the council then enforced new rules from any new developments approve, any new DAs on the sites, and it just makes it more challenging to put designs on there. Absolutely. Less cost-effective, smaller homes, mm. but you've got a bigger block that you can't actually utilise. Correct. Yeah. It's just, but there's, there's they still make them put green space parklands in the estate. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, can we work around the setbacks? <laughs> there's, there's a bit of a blanket approach when it comes to sort of rules and regulations, what you mm-hmm. can do on sites. And um, especially when you're talking about Queensland Development Code, you know, it, it, it is what it is. And if, you know, you just have to comply. But it doesn't really account for the smaller lots. It doesn't account for, even though there's a small lot code, mm-hmm. um, you know, when it comes down to a 300 square metre and a, you've got a 50% site cover, it's just not practical. Yeah. So um, I think there needs to be, yeah, more common sense when it comes to um, sort of individual lots and assessing mm. things on an individual basis as opposed to sort of just trying to take that that blanket approach. Um, I think New South Wales do it really well. They've got Compliant Development Code, which is similar to um, Queensland Development Code. However, it's... Um, it's a it's a more detailed set of rules that you can actually... Um, that, that, that relates to the lot size and the lot width. Mm-hmm. Um Queensland has it a little bit, but it's not quite to the extent that um, that New South Wales has, which makes it a lot more difficult to um, achieve a good result, basically. Yeah. So, um, you know, there, there's a minimum size for the for the garage. However, there's no minimum size for the living area or for the bedrooms or, um, you know, so you, you have this, yeah, wonderful big garage where you can get two cars comfortably in it, but you don't have very big li- living room. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, who wants to live in that house? So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it, it's a it's a constant struggle to to um, yeah provide the yeah. outcomes within That's those rules. Yeah, yeah. And considering if you look at um, in twenty k's from Brisbane right CBD radius, it's more and more of those blocks would all be splitter blocks at three hundred square meters each. Yeah, so it'll be constantly be coming up. It's not like they're four five hundred square meters in there anymore. Exactly. So it'd be challenging yep. as a design perspective if the Absolutely. rules keep getting tougher. Yeah. The clients are trying to buy a block to live in. It's getting challenging on what you can actually build on. So. Well, it is, and and I think you know, I mean, and Lisa just recently completed a statement environmental effects for a uh, a client in in New South Wales, and it was a seventy two page document, you know, out actually outlining the the reasons why this house should be built. I mean, we're talking three weeks of work just writing documentation in terms of planning approval. You know, I mean, it, it's just it, it's really it's just. Mm. Out of, it's out of, Again, out of no, control. No, no yeah. common sense used no. a lot of the time. Mm, yeah. So, seven thousand yeah. jobs completed yeah. passionately. Yes. In, in your history, seven and a half thousand. Actually, seven and a half thousand. actually, seven thousand seven hundred and sixty-two. And growing every day. And growing <laughs> every day. Counting? Yeah, who's <laughs> counting? I just know the figures are coming every day. Yeah, yeah right. So that's, so my, 7, that's my that's my role. Seven hundred and thirty-nine. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, right. So tell us. That's obviously a, a, a lot of lot of projects. Correct. So through that gives you an extensive almost database of, of trends and, and yes. what people, what the general public are, are wanting, I suppose. And a huge responsibility. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So what, what have you noticed, I mean, in that time, over 7,000 jobs, are there things or there trends that have come and gone? Obviously right now one of the, one of the most popular trends we see is like that Hampton-style yeah. facade, but there's been, you know, things come and go and no doubt that will probably come and go as well um, in time, but – are there things over those seven seven thousand seven hundred and thirty nine jobs that <laughs> that have changed well done, and things that are continually evolving? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think yeah, as you say, the the Hampton style is is uh, super popular at the moment. I think mm. here in Australia, the the interior style that we're doing is is quite Hamptons inspired. But really, the the exteriors that we see that we're calling Hamptons are just traditional. Yeah you know, residential, um, you know, we see it in Queensland as we see it in the terrace homes down in Melbourne. It's just that 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 more traditional form, I mm. suppose, with the yeah. gables and um, it's, it's a beautiful style. But, um, you know, there's there's always different trends that, that come and go, but the sort of elements from each always sort of linger. remain and, mm. and linger and, and everyone's got different taste and, and yeah. um, different preferences. So as much as we're seeing a lot of the Hamptons, we still see a lot of the – um, you know, the more modern facades or sort of, you know, a take on the, the mid-century modern with the, um, you know, the skillions or that that's, really that's boxy look. Or Yours is the urban skillion roofs. Right. 
You lost me at Skillion. Skateboard ramp? Yeah, that's right. I'm okay. sure you're a skater yeah, boy. that's right. Exactly right. <laughs> yeah, right. The, the one that you bought, built your house with, that's what it looks <laughs> yeah. like. Yeah, you're right. Okay, awesome. Thanks for that. You yeah. learn something new every day. Don't See, you? I, I, I love it all. So yeah. it's it's so hard for me to, to sort mm. of focus on my favourite. But um, I've got into it a lot more understanding the different roof pitches and styles. Yeah. That, yeah, it gets quite addictive, actually. It yes. does, and it's funny because we have a um, like Instagram group within within the intra intra office. It's just just all the staff, and we're quick. Sending, sending, yeah, sending everyone. We, the weekends are design, just like, look at this design, design, look at this, and that. And it's, yeah, so yeah, so actually, know. the one I sent you last night is pretty amazing. You should okay, have a look yeah. at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so those sort of things are really really important because it sort of it, it, it gives that creative mm. flair and that juices yeah. in terms of gets everything flowing and everybody gets excited about. It. And we have a you know, morning meeting every morning, and which Prue conducts and. and and, um, you know, we're, we're talking about design and, you know, design elements. And, you know, one yesterday Libby sent through, you know, one with beautiful greenscapes in Singapore. And, and um, I mean, just, just... And you could see the pond from underneath and you could see all the koi fish swimming around. It was amazing, amazing. <laughs> yeah, incredible. So they're the things that we talk about on yeah, a day-to-day right. basis in our office. Yeah, exactly. So whilst other people might be talking about certainly other things, but, um, yeah, our, our office is very... Uh, yeah, at the same time, at the same time you guys were talking about that, we were talking about the NRL footy tip. Yeah, that's yeah, it. yeah exactly. Yeah. In the office, it's a very, it's a very different, oh, a different, yeah. very office environment. That's it right. It would be challenging on the facades because I know for us, every design that you complete for us, mm. we offer four different facades for that one yes. floor plan. So yes. when we build the same floor plan in the estate, you know, in the even in the same street, yes. it's not even going to look the same. And if Correct. we did two Hamptons. Floor plans, which are different, yeah. the Hampton facades look completely different to each other. So nothing's actually ever the same. So you're having to redesign a new facade every time. Yep. And if we've got 50 designs from you, it's a lot of different facades. A lot can of Hampton facades. get a little tricky. There's yeah. 50 Hampton <laughs> facades. So none of ours actually ever look the same. I think due the, to the different ranges we offer. Yeah, and I think there's there's always sort of I suppose a common theme, you know, with mm. the Hamptons ranges. You're, yeah. you're always going to have that that common theme, but um, yeah, it's just about getting creative and yeah. and thinking even down of, to the um, window styles. Like yeah. I notice that you guys really m- you know mix up the window different styles that we offer in the facade. So you might have the same gable roof, but we'll really change up the windows, which and because of the setback might be different on the house, it can really make it look different as well. Absolutely, Absolutely. and even just changing that gable feature as well. You know, yeah. you can have a beautiful feature truss or you can have mm. um, some vertical battens or you can have a, a lovely gable vent feature you know there's there's so many different um, uh, ways to sort of yeah mix it up a little bit mm. I think that's probably one of the big takeaways from from our point of view is is that we have a blend of styles and a blend of thinking through our designs whilst it's all connected we've got different people within your organization working on different plans at different times which means for a project builder it's very rare to have a blend of, of different, you know, ideas and, and, and creative, I suppose, juices flowing into to design and, and floor plans because you're normally relying on that one or two or that, that single um, person in there who's responsible for it all. So they all sort of look the same, the same, the same. Yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, That's right. So, you know, Tommy touched on a great point. To be able to deliver very similar or the same house but across different styles and not know that they're identical is yeah. quite rare for a project yeah. builder. It is. Yeah. I think that I think the most we ever did. We had that um, New South Wales builder. Um, we had one floor plan, and he wanted twelve different elevations. Yeah, right. And right. that was that was that was tough. That was tough. <laughs> that was, that was, that was, we we got there, and they yeah. were all you would not know that it they were the same, the same house. house. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, so right. It, it was it was a, it was a challenge, and, and I think that's the, we we in our yeah, office we love it, a challenge. It, yeah. it, it, it was a uh, a wider design, so we had a bit more to work with. Yeah. But yeah, yeah it yeah, gets yeah, harder yeah, and yeah. harder the the smaller the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly, exactly, yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> you've got one window, one door, and a garage, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's yeah, about yeah, it. That's so. right. Now um, we got to wrap it up soon, but I want to for people out there looking at purchasing. Uh, or designing or building a new home, you would see it day in, day out where they come with an ide- ideology of what they want mm-hmm. or they may have gone down the road and made mistakes and whatnot. What's your biggest tip to, to someone looking at home that, that is wanting to build a house in terms of a design perspective, say that they're, they're coming to you directly? Is it cost-based, is it design-based or is it? No, I'd, I mean, firstly, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in first, Per, and then you can finish off. Um, we spend a lot of time together, so we <laughs> – Almost, she's almost made my, they call my my second wife. Or, you know, <laughs> um, but um, I think the thing is that um, what we'd like to see is don't even 
bother about – I mean, go out and have a look at homes and mm. display villages and all that sort of stuff. We'll provide you with a design brief. You write to us in terms of how you live, how you, mm. how you work, how you function, what's important to you, um, you know – are family and friends? Do you entertain a lot? Um, all of those you elements. Have kids, that, are you planning to have, have kids? kids? Are the kids yeah. about to move yeah. out? Um, you know, it's, it's all about how do you live in that how home? So you don't really know their story. Mm. Really Absolutely. In depth, opposed yeah. to I want a four bed, two bath, Absolute car I'll, with a media. I'll spend, you know, anywhere between two to four hours talking to a client. Um, really understanding them, uh, you know, have they got special pieces of furniture that they're important to them? Have they have they travelled? Do they want you know a piece of artwork or whatever it might be to mm-hmm. ensure that you know that, that that is incorporated into their design? What we find is when people provide us with a sketch or whatever, they're actually sort of pigeonholing us. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And we're not allowing a creative team of professionals to be able to then give them the best mm-hmm. outcomes because we're looking at we're looking at you know uh, a whole raft of. We're looking- where the, where the driveway can go to have the, the best access for the vehicle. We're mm. looking at, um, you know, where North is on the lot. We're looking at mm. what the outlook from that lot is, you know. Mm. Um, you know, do you have a two-storey house next year? Do you have a, you know, a corner lot? There's there's so many things that, that sort of come into play mm. when designing yep. that it's a lot easier to go from a written brief of this is what I want, this is my ultimate wish list, mm. um, these are the, all the things that I want to see in my home and here's my site. Yep. Um, you know, I think once once clients sort of start sketching where so, – some people have got really great design skills so that, that they've sort of come up with a plan that really works for them and, and it's great. But, um, you know, a lot of the time it's just easy to go from that wish list that's a written document and then just assess that site and, and come up with a design based on that. Mm. Um, and the outcomes from that are incredible and people go, how in the hell did you get in my head? How did you – I said, that's our job. Mm. You know, yeah. that's our job. These are the aspects we want in the home, and you everything. I mean, yeah. we're, we're talking everything from small lot to like huge. I mean, at least Prue just did a um, a place um, down in Sydney, five hundred and eighty square meters. I think um, it went up to six twenty. Six twenty. <laughs> okay, six twenty. Yeah, last time. Yeah, last time I saw it. Yeah. So, um, and it was just basically you know one window change in the whole place, and we're we're talking a massive home from a from a for design brief. Uh, Lisa did a 680, 680 square metre um, house in Victoria. Um, same thing. We just, he just wanted to increase, increase his study uh, size slightly because he, he, he works from home. Mm. Um, so or, or I think those sort of things and, and when, we, when we constantly get those comments back from clients and it's, it's ongoing, then for us it says, well, that formula works and it works really, yeah. really well. And the clients are just – over the moon in terms and of what they what, what do, they get. Do they give you a budget in mind as well? Like Absolutely, and because I think that's huge. When a client goes, I want this plan. Yes, or you, they have a budget of two fifty, but they go, Tom, this is the plan I like. It's yep. three hundred and fifty square meters or yep. four five hundred square meters. Yeah, guys, you don't have the budget. Yes, mm-hmm. correct. What's the main aspects of the home that you like? And that's yep. when I send that brief over to you. Yeah, so we can actually get what's important. Look, and well, yeah, and and it, it is. It's, it's so so important. But some some clients just come with you because we've got all these great. TV programs mm. and you know and the, the block, block and, and you know <laughs> which are detrimental to you know yeah. <laughs> to to clients because you know they've got massive teams of people behind them actually coming in and fixing them after the word you know yeah, to yeah. make sure. Why are you taking could, advice or inspiration yeah. from from a teacher and not that then but from a teacher and a butcher who are renovating a house? Yeah, you know? that's right. Like, it, it, should exactly. be should be taking advice to them about how to teach and how to cut meat, not how to reno, renovate a house. And that's that's right. another thing yeah. that you do as well. You guys also do renovations as well. Absolutely, renovation designs. Yes. Oh, right. that's yeah. another huge aspect. Yeah, we've got an allocation of four hundred thousand. These are the designs that we want to extend on the home or lift. Yep. There'd be so many, you know, just on the design point of view, would be huge impact to the renovation. It that is must be quite yeah. quite complex because renovations is so hard working within an existing infrastructure yep. of, of the house. And a lot of the time for us, you know, if you weigh it up, even just personally, what we do with our portfolios, it's cheaper for us to build a new house and demo an existing one than to than to do a reno. Yeah. All the time. Well, it is exactly. We're just doing one at Lakelands here on the on the golf course and mm. on the water there, and um, the house is already like six hundred and fifty square meters, and we're renovating it, um, <laughs> and we're putting in a helipad, and we're putting in you know this like this Charlie and the Chocolate Factory like glass elevator type you know sort of 
the thing and you know there's all these all these elements <laughs> sort of coming into this this yeah. home and and um but if you get in a home builder yeah that's right exactly <laughs> but they're hard yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. They're, yeah exactly they're very very difficult but um you know to because in terms of budget and, yeah. and those sort of things but anything that i think is renovation you know make sure you times it by three yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah and that's a huge thing on a designer's yeah, point of view like exactly. for me if i was going to do it the first thing i'd do is go and see you guys and go what is this actually going to cost mm reality instead of as a renovations point of view if you do it wrong you can just be up for thousands yeah i think if you're smart about it um you know renovation can be a really good way to go um obviously there's there's a, a lot of um reuse and recycle in renovating um you know uh, i recently renovated my own house it was built in 1969 and um i was slightly worried about what we were going to find once we pulled all the asbestos off um but what we found was the most beautifully built hardwood frame that was just Stunning. So it was really, really um, wonderful to be able to sort of give the house new life and and um, sort of retain as much of that as possible, um, rather than fully knocking it down. Mm. We're able to you know keep the existing slab, keep the existing framework, and um, you know not have the added. Um, uh, I suppose environmental costs of having to replace all mm. those materials. Actually, so restoring some of the items, reusing like those old Queenslanders with the glass cut, co- with the actual coloured glass. Lighting, yes. lighting, actually, yeah. restoring yeah. and you reusing. I've got friends that are renovating. It works yeah. out really well for them. Yeah. yeah, but I think it's just knowing what part are you renovating. What, how much is that going to cost? And is it is it worth it? Is it worth it? Because I think Absolutely. like a lot of time you go to renovate. Okay, we'll we'll extend a bedroom. This is going to cost. But what's the comparable sales in the area area from a two bedroom home mm-hmm. to a three bedroom home? Is it going to be worth for what that house is, the structure of the roof and the wall, is it going to be worth an extra $60,000 or not? And I think when they're looking for a quick equity uplift or a sale, mm. sometimes I don't think they realise how much they're spending. Just because you're spending 60 doesn't mean you're getting 60 back in equity or 100 back. Absolutely. I think all. it all comes down to doing your research really, mm. you know, and, um, you know, knowing what you've got and knowing your product in the area as well. So, And it's yep. got to be a very holistic approach to to renovation as well. You can't just sort of say, I'm going to do a bathroom. Well, you can. You can just do a bathroom and that's it. But if you're then looking to extending that out, there's so many knock-on mm. effects, you know what I yeah. mean? So you really need to take a holistic approach to mm. it. Yep. Guys, look, that's phenomenal. Thanks so much for, for joining us. For people at home wanting to get in contact maybe to do a design of their own or something like that how's the best way to to contact you guys our best contact is um either orders o-r-d-e-r-s at i want that design.com.au uh, or on telephone, which is uh, 07 55 And your website? Is www.iwantthatdesign.com.au. <laughs> yes, <that's laughs> so I want that design. Yeah. Sounds like you said it before. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thanks so much for watching and listening wherever you are. As you can see, I Want That Design are a crucial part of our team, and thank you so much for the hard work that you guys put in the background. It really makes our job a lot easier in delivering outcomes for all of our clients. So makes thanks so good. much for talking. <laughs> Thank <laughs> thanks you. so much for talking <laughs> everything property with Pivotal Homes and we'll chat again soon. Cheers.